Hi there, today we've dropped over to see a mate of mine, uh, Andrew, on his Compass 33 Nafisa. Andrew's going to walk through his journey into boating, the lead up, his fears and all those types of things. So uh, we're hoping that this might give you a bit of an insight into just one person's uh, journey. Hello everyone, hi mum, hi dad. <laughs> so Andrew, when, uh, when did you first get into boating mate? Uh, I first got into boating around about seven years ago. I actually got into boating through my partner. So yeah, she just basically invited me out on a WAGS sailing session at Manly RQ. And, What's a uh, WAGS? Oh, Wednesday afternoon group sailing. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> not not snags or WAGS. <laughs> yeah, snags and WAGS. <laughs> no, so uh, Wednesday afternoon group yeah, sailing. Yeah, Wednesday afternoon group sailing. So basically she invited me out. Um, yeah, I, I, I just sort of loved it. And um, yeah, my whole sailing sort of career just sort of took off from that. I just felt, um, yeah, sailing was amazing to be on the ocean. Uh, I love that feeling of uh, being free, yeah. yeah. So Andrew, before your first introduction to boating, yeah. tell us a bit about your life. What were you up to before uh, uh, seven years ago? <laughs> I was actually in the army, uh, 23 years. Yeah, wow. I was an yeah. infantry uh, section commander. And uh, yeah, I just basically joined the army after a couple of years of being out of high school. So yeah, that's pretty much all I've done my whole life. My whole life's been army. So pretty so, regimented life. Yeah, yeah, pretty structured. Going into the freedom of sailing. Yeah, <laughs> being a sailor, maybe. Yeah. Um, no, just, uh, yeah, regimented, um, sort of. Structured can I, life. Can I say doctrinated, if that's yep. okay to say. Yeah. Um, yeah, and um, I, I, I've just taken a whole completely new path now. Cool, cool, cool. So um, seven years ago, you you were introduced to WAGS, the Wednesday afternoon group sailing with the local sailing club in Brisbane, Australia. Yep. Um, at what point did you then decide that, well, I want more of this boating thing and I'm going to get into my own boat? Oh, it, it, it was just a beast. It just, I've, it overtook me. Like, um, as I said, doing, yeah, it, it, it was a drug. It felt that I had to sail. I had to get my own boat. I had no idea how to do it because obviously I just did the wags. Um, so I've researched a lot, uh, books, a lot of YouTube, YouTube, uh, different types of boats, just speaking to other people who owned boats. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people said, look, you know, maybe just start off a little bit small, maybe a trailer sailor, uh, see how you go with that. Uh, Cause obviously, you know, when you've got a bigger yacht, bigger sail boat, obviously more money. <laughs> for yep. marinas and stuff like that. So they said, just start small. And I, yeah, I, I, I bought the little trailer sailor and it just, um, it was a coal, coal 19, Australian oh, made yeah. little trailer sailor. And how long did you have that for? Only a year. <laughs> yeah. I had it for quick. a year. I just had it for one year and uh, it just evolved. And I started, I wanted to start small. Like people say, yeah, I don't know, go off by a 30 footer, or 40 footer or whatever, but I, I just, I loved, I wanted to see if I really, truly loved sailing, if I had the passion for it. So I thought, let's just start small, start for Coal 19, and learn from there. And um, obviously every year I've progressed up five foot every year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, but you need yeah, to get the feel for it, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah you got to, like, I had no idea about sailing. And I, I remember the very first time, and I was actually still in the army when I, when I purchased the Cole 19, went away on army exercises, came back, and it was the very first time I took the boat out. And uh, we were leaving from Raby Bay to Peel Island, and I really didn't understand the weather. And, and, that, I ended and, that, up, and that Raby Bay to Peel Island is what, five, seven miles, 10 miles? Yeah, around about uh, five knots, roughly around about an hour and a half to two hours, depending. Uh, but, uh, but as I said, no understanding of the wind or anything like that. And I took it out in around about 20 to 25 knots. Oh, nice. Yeah, good stuff. <laughs> My very, very first introduction, day one, sailing on my own boat. And I was absolutely fucking scared. Yeah. Like, I was petrified. Like, yeah. because, like, a trailer sailor it was pretty small. It only weighed, uh, I think, uh, 1.2, so 1,200 kilos, 1 1.2 tonne. And in 2025 knot winds, like, I struggled to get the sails up because I had no idea. And my partner was with me. 
and we were just like, I was scared. She was laughing and we were just drenched because we were bashing into it, <laughs> trying to get Peel Island. And eventually I, I actually said, no, nah, this, let's turn back around. Yeah. Uh, for me, I felt that it was too much. I'll be honest. I was, I was intimidated. I was, I was sort of scared to be honest, because it was my very first time out in the ocean, but I didn't let that like, bother me or get me down I, from, yeah it didn't deter me from sailing because yeah. what we did is we left the boat on the trailer because we put the boat back on the trailer yes it raby bay left it there overnight and came back the next day because the winds were lighter yeah. yeah and yeah. then we actually went and made it to pearl and i know it sounds it sounds funny maybe other uh, sailors or other people who have just done this as well like when you make your first jump from a port to go somewhere, um, you know, like uh, to, to your next destination, it feels like you're in a different country. Yes. And that's what it absolutely felt <laughs> like going from Raby Bay to Pearl Island. The people probably laugh, but it actually, for but, me, it was a massive milestone. Like, just to give people an idea, Raby Bay to Peel Island is in Moreton Bay. Yeah, so correct. It's Sorry, yeah, Moreton Bay. Protected waters. <laughs> yeah, it's in, and it's, there's a couple of islands in there yeah, to hide behind. So it's, yeah. It, it's not like, you know, you're doing the Bass Straits in Hobart. But it's it's in closed waters, it's sheltered. But it's still, for a first time novice sailor, still pretty it can, epic. Yeah, it can be, especially when you take it out in 20, 25 knot winds yeah. and you're bashing into it. Yes. So, uh, but when we got to Peel Island the next day, oh, it was just such an achievement. I, it felt like, because when the, where, uh, Peel Island, when the water runs out, it, it's sort of like the Caribbean. And yeah. I, I've actually sailed, um, la, uh, two years ago, I sailed with my partner and a couple of friends. We hired a catamaran and we sailed around, um, uh, Cuba, yes, down the southern end of Cuba, and it reminded me, yeah, Cuba reminded me of that, you know, because when the water runs out, it, it Peel Island's gorgeous. So, yeah. so what I'm trying to say, it was just an epic first adventure. First I loved yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Well, a great start to boating. Yeah. <laughs> Going back prior to that first epic adventure from Raby Bay to Peel Island. Yeah. What were your greatest fears about getting into boating, given that you'd had very little experience on your own boat and skippering your own boat before that? So, so what, what were your fears? <laughs> I guess capsizing. <laughs> yeah, that's a big one. Um, look, yeah, just um, uh, not understanding the ocean a bit, pro but being like Morton Bay, like Australia, like it, 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 it's, I guess, capsizing, uh, getting like, let's just say, I mean, getting probably attacked by a shark. Yeah. I mean, I know it's, I, I didn't really understand the ocean like I do now. So I think my biggest fears was to actually three things, <laughs> running aground, capsizing, and then getting eaten by a shark in my bay. <laughs> Cause it is like, it, it's heaps of sharks, but, yeah. but having a healthy understanding now, you know, six, seven years later, I've, you know, I, I have a healthy uh, respect, um, you know, for the marine life, whether it's sharks, turtles, or, or, or whatever. Like, I, I grew and up... for the ocean, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I grew up in the western suburbs of Sydney, so it, it, ta it had taken me two and a half hours to get to the closest beach. So to go to the beach was like a real big... Epic adventure. Epic itself. adventure yeah. to, as, a young, as a young kid. So I never really understood the ocean, but now I do. But I, I think they are my biggest fears was you know running aground damaging the boat you know because obviously boats are expensive when you break them and stuff like that uh but more sort of just the fear of probably the fear of the, unknown, the caps even. yeah the unknown and the capsizing and it actually took a while for me to get used to the boat healing yeah. actually yeah that that was one of the big things because and healing is, is for those that don't know is when the boats yeah when the, the boats sail, obviously the sails are fall correct the, the boat and, leans over yeah and, and you know when you feel like weather helm yeah like, what was weather helm what what what's weather helm I mean that's just I, I didn't even know what it is but having a feel for the boat and I think that was the fear of what I'm trying to say when the boat capsized because I didn't really understand the boat yeah does weather, that make weather sense helm. or you know and, and weather helm just to uh, just to enlighten people is the effect. Of the mainsail possibly being overpowered or pulled on a bit too tight, driving the bow of the boat into the wind. Yeah, yeah. And and that can be a bit disorienting and a little bit off-putting if you're not familiar with it. Yeah, definitely. And I understand that. And I guess the other thing, yeah, it's the fear of the unknown, and you don't really know what you don't know. 
Yeah. When it yeah. comes down to knots and depths and all that nonsense. Yeah, well, as I said, I had no idea. I had to read books, YouTube, or talk to other people. Um, and I think that was the, probably the biggest one. And, and just stepping back with, like, trimming your sails. And I mean, we're sort of digressing here a little bit. But, but even, like, when you're healing too much, that I found with the boat is that it's, um, it's underperforming. I'm tr I was trying to find those sweet spots of the trying to optimal sailing yeah. conditions so, for the trailers it was a trailer sailor yeah you but know, really so. you're also saying is that you just got to get out there and have a go and you've done it a really smart way by not investing half a million dollars in a big ass catamaran correct and going yeah. out and trying to figure it out you've gone out in a small boat it's easy to handle relatively safe in an area where worst case scenario Shelter. you've got to swim two nautical miles to the nearest beach if everything goes pear-shaped. Yeah, it's sheltered waters as yeah, well. So, so it's, yeah. it's have a go. That's really the I message. Think, yeah, I think that that's the, the, the message driving home. We've all had to start somewhere, right? You've got to. Yeah. You have to. Yeah. You've you got to start. Yeah. Seven years down the track since your first introduction to boating. Tell us, how does it feel? What's, what's your feelings about boating now and what's your position now? <laughs> um... I don't know. I just love it. I can't get enough of it. It's just in the, it's in the, it's in the body. It's in the veins. Yeah, I often find um, myself telling people it's like cocaine. Once it's in your system, yeah. It's oh, look, it's, but it is it's, a drug. Yeah, it's just, um, it's been an amazing journey. Like, you know, starting off as I said, starting off from the trailer sailor. So I'm very quickly, Col 19, top at 25, um, a 30 foot uh, Vanderstat, and then obviously my current boat, which is the Compass 33, so 33 foot. So starting off at a trailer sailor, working my way up to this boat has been such an achievement uh, in the space of seven years. But I think pushing those boundaries of saying, right, I, I need to leave Morton Bay. I have to get out of Morton Bay. Like, I love Morton Bay. It's my home. It's beautiful sailing grounds. But I needed to test my skills as, as, a, as a sailor. Yes. And I thought... Let's do the Whit Sunday. So let's. I think it's five hundred nautical miles. I think uh, to from Raby Bay to the Whit Sundays. And I thought I'm going to do this. Yeah. I've got to do it. If That's I don't a, do it, it's a five hundred nautical mile run up the Queensland coast. Yeah, the open ocean. C correct. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and how long was that after you? In, in the seven year span. So was that yeah. three years after you first got in, or uh, four? Uh, that would have been so five. Uh, no, six years because I did it last. last year. I did it last year. Would have been okay. six. Years. So yeah. only last year which is I pretty did much it. When we first met, yeah, yeah, yeah which yeah. how we ran into each other. Um, look, it was wow. It was such a journey. It, it gave me so much confidence about myself. Like when I got back to Brisbane, I should say. Yeah. Um, you know, to be able to to go up there. So I did go up with a friend. I had a friend who came with me from Raby Bay to Yapoon. Uh, then he hopped off at Yapoon because he had to go home and then I continued the way and then spent uh, three months up in the Whit Sundays. But then I solo sailed all the way from the Whit Sundays back to Brisbane by myself, solo. The whole sailing. 500 and something nautical Correct, yes, yeah, solo. And I have to admit, I was I was scared. Yes. Like, I was like, oh my God, what happens if it breaks down at Towns, Townsville Island? Like we're in the middle of bloody nowhere. Like, oh my God, I'm, 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 I'm potentially offshore. Like, it's going to take me 12 hours to, to reach land for. Uh, you know, I mean, yeah, you do island hop. But, but it was just the fear of isolation, being alone, that really played those sort of little mind games. And being able to cope with whatever. Yeah, and I have to admit, the, the, when I left uh, left the Whit Sundays uh, and did the first push, oh, my God, it was just howling. I was smashing into the wind, and I just thought, Day one of leaving the Whit Sundays, I don't know if I can do this. I thought, oh shit, I don't know if I can do the 500 nautical miles by myself. I just don't know if I've got the intestinal fortitude. And I just thought, holy shit, man. Like, so anyway, what I did is I just broke it down into segments. One day at a time. One, exactly. So day one. And be safe. That's probably the. the yeah, the definitely. And it was thing. something oh, I, was, I was saying to myself be safe. If it's, I know I did punch into it uh, the first day, but I, I was only, uh, I think, um, was it, uh, what's the first island? Was it Lindemoon or maybe past Lindemoon Island? Some, yeah. yeah, it was one of the islands past that. So I was doing a big, I think I was doing like a 12 hour day sail, which I did all day sailing. But I thought if it's safe, you can always turn back. Yeah. 
can always I can always turn back. Well, one of the things that I've always so, worked on is you've always got to have an alternate. Correct. Yeah. So plan I did. B. I had plan A, plan B. I had all these things, and I and I and I've got a lot of safety equipment. I got I got uh, two e perbs. I uh, don't have a life raft, but I do have the dinghy. I've got a ditch bag, all that sort of safety stuff. So I I, I felt that. I've prepped as much as what yes. I can prep. I can't prep anymore. So if something goes wrong, I've just got to deal with it there and then and, and try. And I always maintain comms with uh, uh, Coast Guard or, or VMR, which is our rescue service here in Australia. Yeah. So I always did that. And I always did the right thing of, of logging on. I, I logged on every day. Um, you know, some people don't, some people do, whatever. Um, but I did it. It was just the nice to have the comfort factor of being solo sailor to talk to people and, and and them knowing where you are correct yeah so and majority of cruising up the coast you do have internet so when i felt because there, there was a couple of days that i did feel alone yes and i wanted to text people just to make myself feel better and you got to realize this is my first solo yeah i, I you know i haven't done solo before you know and, like and pretty a much the second time you've been out of Mort the protection of morton bay Co yeah, correct. After going up to the Sundays and then turning back. But tell yeah. me about the feelings now, okay? So you've, you've had all these amazing achievements. Yeah. And, and they are quite amazing. And you've just kept pressing on. The, the underlying thing has been safety. But what is the drug of boating? <laughs> the drug? Uh, I guess... Like, it's not all gung-ho adventure no, stuff. No, no. It, it's, it's, it's quiet time. It's solace. It's doing things on your terms. Yeah. Like, you can just say, well... Sitting in a quiet... Yeah, like, anchorage. I mean, today, it's so sunny, it's so beautiful. Uh, and you can just choose what you want to do. If it's a miserable day, you just go, look, man, I'm not going to sail today. I'm just going to stay on anchor. Why, why bother? It's it's 30 knots blowing. But who yeah. would sail in that? Why would you want to sail? Like, just and that's another out. thing an and, old bloke once said to me. He said, if in doubt, stay out. Yeah, and yeah. I... That's what I love about it. It's the... It's getting to getting to know yourself and I think that's probably what I loved about boning is getting to rediscover myself as a yes. person yep. uh, you know I, you know I was in the army obviously I deployed overseas on operations without getting it all into the, the the military side but it was when I left the army to get into boating I was rediscovering myself yep. like who do I want to be who 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 am I I'm getting a taste for freedom <laughs> Yeah, being not the, not, not the, re, not the, not the shackles on and, and being You will have up. breakfast at 6am. <laughs> you will make your bed. Um, yeah. but um, So now you get out of bed and don't make it? Actually, you do. <laughs> look, have a look. I actually made my bed. And actually, routine. Yeah. Like, seriously, I love routine because that's what I just do. You probably see me. I mean, you know me. Like, if you go down now and put the camera in there, you'll see the bed's made, the kitchen's clean. I like to have a routine because when... I think you're sailing, routine's good yes. because then you, you get up, you do this, you do that, and it makes you start the day on a positive note, but it makes you feel good knowing that you've done everything. And everything's in order. And everything's in order, and if something goes wrong, well, then you've got to quickly go on the fly. But if your boat's a, let's say, a shit fight, yeah. like, you've got to move all around the mess and, you know, all stuff like that. I, I think 99% of people wouldn't really. If you're hitting rough seas yeah. too and you've got shit everywhere, it's in everywhere you're going to be flying around the cockpit. Yeah, and, and I learned that. I actually learned that uh, my very first trip out of the bay, I just did a little solo sail to Malubar. Didn't have anything packed away. It was all nice and neat, like I was living <laughs> in a home. In an and then when I got straight past Bribey Island. Into open ocean. Into open ocean. It was game on. And once again, I didn't know there was a surf. Uh, hazard warning that there was <laughs> coming up like a low trough coming up from Sydney so I ended up taking and I, I reckon between three to four meter swells on the beam yeah and I was just like holy shit man I'm glad it's only I think nine hours to yeah. pull the bar or you can turn back and get or I can turn <laughs> back but but it was such good sailing like it wasn't strong winds it was just real swelly yeah and it was good because it gave me the confidence to go. Oh man, this this boat can handle some. It, this boat can handle some good, some good seas. And it's a eighties overcompensated fiberglass boat, so the the, the the hull is so thick. And it's good to 
know that I, I have that in this yeah. pie, and it's good to learn. Yeah. So. So, so all those feel there's a whole array of feelings in there that you've yeah. got. There's obviously the serenity of sailing around the beautiful islands. Yeah. There's, there's the I guess the excitement of of holy shit, I'm actually doing this on my own. Yeah. And I'm as prepped as I can possibly be, but I've also got the backup of knowing there's people out there that gives me comfort and it's and it's an awesome achievement yeah and yeah. and also this the shackles are off is that you can't do the liverboard of boat thing mm. by a diary and a deadline no. you can't say i need to be there by tuesday because i have a dentist appointment well, well that shit just no, doesn't happen they're, they're on a boat time what is time there yeah. is no time it's it's time as in not pressing to get somewhere in a hurry like to some, a perceived deadline yeah yeah sometimes the weather turns and you you know you might have only factored in staying in an anchorage for one or two well one or two nights but then um it, it blows out classic examples when i'm coming back home uh pancake creek yes uh there was a massive storm and um uh man i'm gonna hang around what a beautiful place <laughs> pancake creek if everyone knows pancake creek i'm chilling there for three days i yeah. don't care i'm i'm waiting yeah. for this storm and it, it was lightning and i was like oh i'm getting a bit scared because i was worried the lightning was going to hit the mast but anyway three days later I, I i left pancake creek and it was just such a beautiful um sail yeah. from pancake so creek, you yeah. so the, the big thing there of course that i'm hearing is obviously that your movements are governed by the weather yeah yeah and, well for me yeah i don't need to be well, where do i need to be why yeah. do i have to rush like that's when things just go wrong go if you, yeah. you know yeah so so andrew as you know we're pulling together a uh, a group of sailors and putting together youtube channels and yep. and sailing trips where people can come and join us and we can teach them all these things do you think you would have benefited from having access to a resource like this where you can find information on, about anchoring and trip planning and those types of things. Would you have benefited, do you think, from having access to something like this when you first got into boating? Oh, definitely. Yeah, like, I had, as I said, like, um, I had no idea. I mean, yeah, you you got to jump into it. You can't just wait around, you know, like, um, you know, you, you can learn as much and you can watch all the videos and all that stuff, but you've got to dive into it. But, yes, definitely... Uh, I felt that I wasn't too sure. So I had to join like Cruising Queensland, Sailing Australia, which are great, which are Facebook, um, uh, Facebook, what do you call it? Uh, the channels. Yeah, yeah, platforms, Facebook yeah. platforms, yeah. Uh, but it would have been good to um, have this because I don't know, like at that stage when I got into, there was, I mean, obviously the sailing channels, but not really on how to start sailing. I mean, yeah, okay, there's all these shows that go, hey, you know, I bought a boat and, you know, I'm, this is what I do, but not really breaking it down as in, in training structure, yeah. as in structured training, like in some ways doctrine or, I mean, it doesn't have to be doctrine that's, uh, exactly right because yes. everyone has a different way of um, uh, interpretation interpretation and teaching yeah. but definitely it definitely would have helped having like a go-to platform where I can reach out to people yes. um, even if they're novices or even if they're salty old sea dogs that are yacht masters or whatever but you can ask um, specific yeah, questions yeah. and that what we're trying to do is we're aiming to definitely to, like that first day you talked about, well, we've got a trail sail, let's just go out to Peel Island. It's only yeah. 10 miles. What what can go wrong? Well, I didn't well, even know how to rig it. Yeah. I didn't even know how to... What, what, what's well, a that's, four, four stay? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's what, we're, that's what we're aiming to do, is to, to go through the terminology so you can actually have a conversation with someone. And yeah. when they talk about four stays or halyards or sheets and pleats and all these things, yeah. that you understand what they're talking about. And even the weather, before you go out check the weather and what does it actually mean and how's it going to impact on us so yeah so that's all so that's what we're aiming to do and and we're hoping that people like yourself can get involved and come and teach people from your experience so that their journey can be safer more enjoyable and less traumatic yeah. so uh yeah appreciate that so to um <coughs> i'll just keep it running here oh, okay, yeah. so tell me about a couple of the good times like and the interesting times, yes, I've heard that you've run aground somewhere and I've also heard that you've had some great times on the beaches oh, with friends that you've just met. So God, rattle, if, off, rattle off if, a couple of these things that just If come to someone mind. says to me that they've 
never ran aground. They're they're liars. It's bullshit. <laughs> That's bullshit. Uh, oh, look, I've had some classics. I've lost uh, two outboard motors trying to get it from the boat into the dinghy. I've ran aground twice, thank God. Uh, once in the trailer sailor, the Col 19, the very first boat I ever had, and then this old girl, the old Compass 33, ran aground trying to get through the Narrows, and everyone knows, you know, Queensland sailors know the Narrows really well, and um, yeah, ran aground because I misjudged, used well, you've got the wrong, wrong tides. Yeah, I, I, yeah but that, I'm not blaming him, yeah. that's actually my You fault. listened to the wrong end of the horse. <laughs> I did, I did, I went from a different bloody tide uh, chart instead of the Gladstone. Anyway, ran aground, and thank God, I just... I got off there. I don't know how. It was a miracle. It was just taking the boat backwards, forwards, but and, and moving the mud from under the keel to be able to keep floating. Keep floating, <laughs> and that's exact. And it was an outgoing tide. So thank God I quickly got off there because this boat would have been on its side, and it would have been pretty embarrassing. So because um, that's probably the biggest thing is your pride is hurt if you run aground somewhere, the tide goes out and your boat's fine dry. Oh man, I was scared because I was like, I'm another like, sailor's come by. And oh, like, oh, everyone's like, oh, who's this? Who's this tool man? He's just put his <laughs> boat on the side. Like, do you even know how to boat? <laughs> like, uh, um, so yeah, like I think, I mean, they're the. The, the, so there's always going to be interesting oh, things, look, but just, but that's how you but that's how you learn. Yeah. Like you've got to make the mistake. Everyone makes mistakes. Remember, remember that um, the uh, fast boat, uh, like where they race around the world, that Volvo, uh, and it yeah. hit the reef. Yes. Look at those guys. They're guys that are probably been selling for decades. Yeah, and um, they didn't use paper charts. He was using. I'm pretty sure he was using his Navionics, and he didn't zoom in enough. And they hit a reef because of it. Now, look at those guys. Those guys are professional. So we all make mistakes. Yeah. Um, and I think that's I think that's what I love about boating is that you, you make the mistake, as long as you don't sink your boat. And you learn from it. <laughs> and you learn from it. You go, hey, that was... But you have to say, in that scenario, yeah. the most important thing is don't panic. Above, yeah, above yeah. all I, else, you cannot panic and go into a meltdown and, and I, I have to admit I did I did freak out a little bit when I was in the narrows, like when I got stuck in the ground. And like I wasn't like, oh my god, oh my god. It was just like, oh for, you know, I was cursing and swearing. And I was just more concerned. I, I wasn't even concerned about me. I was concerned about the boat. I'm like, oh my god, I don't want the boat on its side. <laughs> Shit's gonna go flying, I'm gonna have to stay here for but 12 that, hours. In that environment, um, though, it's a sandy bottom, so there's, oh, it's mud. Yeah, there's fundamentally going to be no real damage done to the nah, boat. It's nah. just your pride's been hurt. Correct. You're yeah. pissed off because you've made a wrong decision. And I wanted and to get through the narrows. <laughs> so <it's, laughs> yeah. And I wanted to get through the narrows because I was like, I have been on, I've been down the narrows twice, but on catamarans. Yes. Uh, and they weren't massive catamarans, so they, I think they were drawing just slightly under a metre. And you draw, um, what do you draw, one uh, I draw uh, 1.6. 1.6 so metres. Yeah, I okay. needed, <laughs> so when I found out, I needed a minimum of 3.2 tide running out of Gladstone, uh, going from Gladstone. But I used the Ramsey's Crossing, <laughs> and it was only at 3 metres. So I was trying to get through on a 3 metre high tide. So I was, obviously I, I waited... Uh, for the moment where you drop anchor and then you take the tide in and you yeah. get to ramps is just, crossing on the high tide. Just for people to understand, the Narrows is, a, is halfway up the Queensland coast yeah. <laughs> and it's a passage that runs up inside an, an island and the reference points that Andrew is talking about are Gladstone Marina is maybe 10 miles away and that's the tide that you need to read. Ramsey's Crossing is the bit that's dry at low tide because we Correct. have what, three, four metre yeah, tidal drops. variation. So yeah. if your calculations are out, you, you've got the high likelihood of being screwed. And, yeah. the, and the, the basic math is that you need 1.5 or 1.6 metres on top of the draft, draft or the depth of your boat. So in Andrew's case, he's 1.5, 1.6 metres deep at uh, the draft six, rather. Yeah, but, yeah. And you then need to add... Uh, another 1.5, 1.6. So to be safe, Andrew needed a tide that was 3.2 metres or more. Correct. But the 3.2 metres or more at Gladstone Marina, not 10 or 15 miles up the coast. Correct. From Ramsey's Crossing, Crossing, where the it tidal... It goes mud. Yeah. It, it, it goes. It, you, 
So it was yeah. a bit of a pickle. You've learned. Anyway, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So I learned the hard way. So what about the good stuff? Just give me oh, an example. Man. Of, you know, what oh man! Oh, just the wits. Oh, the wits Sundays, like just cruising uh, around all the islands, snorkeling, swimming, um, clear waters, clear, clear waters. Uh, you know, catching up with randoms, meeting new people, sundowners, co- cocktails. My nickname's Ice Man because yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have I have a. <laughs> An ice maker. I yeah. have an ice maker, and I was like the bee's knees. I was like, hey, guys, I've got an ice. And everyone's like, we're going to start calling you ice man because you've got an ice maker, uh, which everyone's probably got ice so like fridges big, on their boat yeah. anyway. But It's a big yeah. social scene, isn't it? It's but yeah, it's that fantastic. And, and what I love about the cruising lifestyle um, is there's always someone willing to help. Everyone wants to help. It's a great if community. You, yeah, and I've never experienced like that. The only place of every experience is in the military in the army yes um you know the comradeship the loyalty and all that but the boating is the only thing i've ever felt the same way about like um you know uh, i remember when i lost my tender uh in morton bay at peel island i, oh, I just didn't t- there you go there's a funny <laughs> moment i didn't tie it off properly Wake up in the morning, it's like, oh my God, there goes, where's my, my tender? tender's gone. My yeah. tender's gone. And there's a guy, a fishing boat in a tinny, and he was going around to the boats asking people uh, if this was their tender. And I'm yelling out, and I actually got the horn, my, the, the fog horn, you know. Yeah, you, yeah. And I beeped it, and he looked, and I'm like waving. I said, um, that's my tender. <laughs> <laughs> and he's come over, and he's like, he goes, he's, I guess this is yours. And I said, yeah. And I just said, oh man, look. You know, um, I actually said, look, I've got a bottle of rum. I said, can I give you a bottle of rum or can I give you some beers? And he just said, nah, man, look, it's all good. Don't worry about it, mate. Because you do the same for him. That's what he said. He goes, I'm sure if you would help somebody else out. And I said, yeah, of course. And I'm just amazed. So that's what I love about boating is everyone is willing to just try and give their other fellow sailor, Bodhi, a hand. If they need it. If they they need it. One of the other things that that I notice is that... um, all your social statuses seem to go out the window. Whether you can be in an anchorage somewhere and you do the sundown as you say, you're yep. four or five o'clock in the afternoon on a on a beach, you'll see the dinghy start to appear. Yep. In the anchorage, you'll have boats, some boats that could be worth 20 grand and they're barely floating and other boats are worth 2 million. Yeah. And they've got everything that, that opens and closes. But on the beach, everyone's, everyone's the same. They're just, all just friendly, happy. Everyone's life. just, yeah, that's it. You just nailed it. Everyone's just sailing and enjoying life and, yes. in, and, and enjoying the company of other like-minded people yeah. which are cruisers i know sailors, i so. prefer to be sitting on a, on a beach with a bunch of randoms <laughs> that i've just met rather than sitting in traffic driving to and from work that's exactly right yeah. <laughs> what advice would you give to newcomers to boating that is to people who are sitting in an office somewhere thinking there's got to be something more to life than this and i want to get into boating or people who've just got an inheritance and thought, screw it, let's buy a boat. Like people who are wanting to get into boating or who have just somehow found themselves with a boat, what advice would you give them? <clears throat> um, don't rush. Take your time. Uh, really know, like, what do you want to do? Do you, do you uh, are we talking cruising, are we talking liverboard, are we talking just weekend sailor? Uh, you know, trailer sailoring, stuff like that. Um, try to work out what you want to do and not rush. And I, I think most of all is just enjoy it. Yeah. Just enjoy it. Like, enjoy... Like, you don't... Like, what you said before, and it, like, you don't have to have a, a $250,000 boat. Yes. You know, you can get the exact same experience with a ten thousand dollar sailboat or a quarter of a million dollar sailboat hey it's a sailboat okay yeah it's the same anchorage it's it's the same ocean yeah Yeah. of course like okay yeah it's gonna go faster and it's gonna have all the mod cons and all that but hey it's why do you buy sailboat you buy sailboat to sail but even the mod cons all come at a price you know you want to have all the bills and whistles and an ice maker, you're going to need power. <laughs> you're going to need, to you're gonna need some good power. <laughs> but let that could be for another topic discussion yeah, another with discussion. my EnerDrive setup. Yeah. Um, just did a plug. Yeah. So, uh, so the advice is have a go, don't rush. Yeah, I, I think just in, man, look. And get involved in the community is something that I would add too and ask questions because you will find 
most people are happy to help. Yeah, look, I just think... And encourage. You know, I'm not going to get into how the whole world is at the moment and stuff like that. But it's like, for God's sakes, man, like, just embrace life and embrace your hobby. And if you want to get into something, just take that leap of saying, hey, I'm going to give it a go. And if you don't enjoy it, or you say, hey, sailing, boating, whatever, it's not for me, that's okay. You can do that. At least you've had a go. You, at least you've given it a go. Yeah. Not gonna, not be a gunner. Well, oh, oh man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy, I'm gonna buy a boat. Well, when are you gonna buy a fucking boat? Are we talking yeah. in a year's time, or are we talking in, you know, thirty years time when you're sixty five? Like that's dream. what I'm saying. You don't need. Dream. But the way that you've done it is that you've you've been through. I've been boating for God, forty years in one way or another. Yeah. I've had two sizable boats and a whole bunch of little go fast things. Yeah. But but you went on a, almost it seems like a structured plan. We're going to get a trailer sailor. It's safe. We're just going to poke around. It's not a big uh, and not expense. a big financial outlay. So, yeah, like, so as you say, as you as you moved up in size, yeah, you still had an exit strategy that wasn't going to cost you your life. You haven't sold the no, farm to do that's, it. That's that's exactly right. Yeah. You know, it was, look, I I I when I did the wag sailing uh, with my partner and I got into it, I fell in love with sailing. Uh, I still, to be honest, I still wasn't a hundred percent sure. Uh, financially if this is uh, what I wanted to do and I just wanted to dip my toes in and not buy a like not go from like not just my first boat it's not a 40 foot you know production boat like a Beneteau or whatever and I've just spent you know maybe 150 200 grand straight up on my first boat now hey you can do that there's yeah. there's nothing that says that you can't do it but I just wanted to just take it because I had no idea. Kind of baby steps. And yeah, no, I had no, no idea. I had no idea. And I just thought, well, let's just start off with a trailer sailor. Because two things. Um, I can keep it at my home. Yes. I can keep it on the trailer. So I keep the fees down. Yes. And so that where I save money there. And then, hey, oh, man, I'm just, I'm just doing some weekend sailing. And I just want to see how I go with that. Yeah. Because so, at yeah. the end of the day, whether your boat's 20 foot long or... Bloody 120 feet long. Uh, yeah. It's still the same ocean. It's still the same it's beast. Yeah. The same principles of sailing apply, as in yeah. putting sails up and, and propelling a boat forward. It's just the comfort factor and the yeah. investment that you have made at the start. Yeah. So I'm often suggesting people do the same thing: is go and get a charter boat, for example, and and yeah. run amok and give that a try and and yeah, learn definitely. to see if it's something for you. Start. Uh, start make, reasonably sm- small. Or make friends with boats. Or make friends with people <laughs> with boats. You, bring lots of rum. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah and obviously. Ice. A lot of, bring your ice maker. Um, yeah, but always good. Like yeah. boats. Always know somebody who has a boat. Like yeah. everyone, like my partner's friends are like, oh, Andrew, when are we going on the boat? Yeah. Like, and it's like, oh my people God. People always want to come, don't they? Especially summertime. Yeah. Like when the sun's out, Queensland weather. Oh my god! Like everyone wants to be epic. on a boat. Yeah, um, and you find that most most boaties, yes, there's a lot of recluse um, reclusive people that live on boats. It's like go away, everybody go away. I'm just living on my boat. Yeah. But in the main, most people will at some stage love to take their friends or family out I on their boat. Yeah, me straight up. My first. Just, I have to admit, in the beginning, I was just so happy to take everybody out boating. Like, yeah. I was just like, buddy, 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 yeah. buddy, who's coming? Yeah. Uh, but now, I have to admit, I sort of like having a little bit of boat time by myself, like yeah. solo. Yeah, yeah. Because, uh, you know, I just want to do things my way. But, but, yeah. but yeah, like, hey, you got a boat, man. Like, sometimes people might not be able to financially, and there's people out there that can't aff- aff- afford a boat, and that's yeah. the truth. And so, so, in your situation, yep. like your partner is working, you're not a liveaboard per se, but nah, you, you, no, I don't you are that. able to spend weeks at a time on Correct. the boat or a yep. month or two and your partner comes and joins you. So you've got this best got of both worlds yeah, kind definitely of balance. Yeah, definitely a flexible life. I'm not a permanent liveaboard, but yeah, I do go away for weeks on end. Um, and it just, it, it works. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, so I've got the house and... Yeah, well, works well for you. Yeah, yeah, have enough boat, go home, come back to the boat. So, yeah. yeah, we've heard a lot about where you've been in the last seven years. So, what's your future boating plans look like for you? What have you got well, on the horizon and beyond? <sighs> More sailing, international sailing, like uh, you know. So, Are you yeah, talking was, ocean passage sailing or? Oh, nah, look, I don't know if I'm there. Uh, to be honest, I don't know if I'm there yet. But I do my 
bucket list dream is to buy a boat in the Mediterranean. You know, I say, okay, so I bought this boat, I've got a 33 foot, I've, you know, I've learned along the way um, and I'm still learning. But, I think um, we all are. Yeah, but, but I want to up the game. I, 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 you know, I'm in, a, I'm in a really good position to be able to spend some time in the Mediterranean and, and it's hard as well because you've got the Shenzhen, that's probably another topic. So, you know, you've got to sort of uh, cruise around the Med and Med Hop. And you're talking about visas and... Yeah, and, yeah, because yeah, you can only, very quickly, you can only do three marts uh, in a Shenzhen area and then you've got to get out for the 91 days in 180 yeah. or, or move to... Uh, move your boat to like Turkey or Croatia, but anyway, yeah. that's that's another thing. But, so, um, so the med, the med is on, on your. Yeah, list. yeah, the med- Mediterranean. Not, like, not so much ocean passages. I have to no, say that no. I'm with you. Is that I love the coastal cruising. I've, I've been lucky enough to cruise Tahiti, Croatia, and all these places around the world. Yeah, ocean passages. I'm often joking with people saying, "Oh, yes, I'm always doing ocean passages." But yeah, yeah with Qantas or Air New Zealand or Singapore Airlines, because yeah, yeah. they have movies and meals. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you're there yeah. in a day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's and that's. What, I have to admit, that's. You know, I, I just don't know if I'm there yet. I'm not saying I'm. I'm not counting it out yes i'm just saying that hey at the moment. Uh, uh, yeah man i just want to go to the med and it's been oh, like i've been to italy four times and i've been all over italy i've been to greece uh sailing you mean boating oh no, no i'm sorry okay uh, uh, like just as tourism like yes. just flying over there um the only boating i've done overseas was cuba that was amazing yes. uh that was phenomenal cruising um but it's always been a bucket list of mine is to, to, to buy a boat and just sail around the Med for maybe two, three years and, and, and just bounce around. Like, it's like as I've said, I've been there and I see all these other people. Look, I see other people on YouTube channels that even people there in the country, like when I was down in, you know, Positano, Sorrento, the Amalfi Coast and all that. And people have got boats they've got their own so why can't I why yeah. can't I do it I often see myself standing on the on the beach whether it's somewhere here in Australia or in Europe or in Thailand I'm looking out at the water and thinking yes I'm on the land and yeah. there's a bunch of amazing stuff I just want to get out there I, I want know. to get out to where the islands are and have you ever where... seen that Kermit thing where Kermit's looking out of the window on a rainy day and he's like and Kermit's like I wonder if my boat's thinking about me uh, that's me yeah. <laughs> that's me standing <laughs> On a side, like a, a wharf, and I'm looking out at other people going, oh, God, man, I so envy you. Yeah. But but that is me. I, and that's the drug. That's the drug. That, of, I know. It's, it's, it's just so... I just don't get any other feeling from it. Yeah. Like, it is... It, well, there's same, nothing else that you do that you get the same feeling from. Nah, yeah. like, I just don't... I mean, I've done a lot of things in my life, um, and I still am going to do a lot more in life, but I just don't get that from anything else like yeah. sailing is just i don't know it's 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 it's, hard it's, to put it's words, yeah it? it's 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 so intoxicating and it's like when i'm at home i'm like when am i going out next and i've yeah. only i've only just been home for like two days yeah. that's what it's like but you know uh, my partner's a very uh busy woman so you know i want to get home and i want to spend time with her and um uh, you know, so yeah, boating's always going to be something that we love, and she obviously shares that dream uh, of the Mediterranean. Now, I don't know when we're going to do it. It might be in two years' time. I would be re- more realistic and say probably five years once, um, once her daughter turns eighteen, yeah. and she's a bit more of a grown adult. Yeah, and yeah. a bit more freedom. The Correct, other, yeah. The other thing too that people are probably thinking is, you know, how on earth does this guy who's not that old, do yeah. this. And without going into the gory details, you're basically on a, um, a former army pension. Yeah. Which so, sort of allows you to do what you Yeah, doing. yeah. So basically, yeah, I, I was medically discharged uh, from the army uh, due to, you know, due my service, operational service. Um, and I'm just glad that I found this. Yeah. So I found sailing uh, when I was in the army. Yes. And then I just fell in love with it. And... You've been, I, you've been, some would say it's lucky, but 
I'm often told the same thing. Oh, you're so well, lucky to live that life. But well, in your case, you've done your time. Yeah, but and- I, but but sailing has saved me. Sailing has saved my relationship. Sailing has saved me your as sanity. a person. My sanity, my confidence. Yes. I lost a lot of confidence when I was in the army due to you know uh, certain circumstances and, and things like that. Uh, when you serve overseas in in combat uh, in an operational theater like Afghanistan or Iraq. Um, so I, I just found, um, I just, yeah, I just lost myself. But then when I got into sailing, found the sailing, I became a completely different person. It sort of reinvigorated me to... You lose some life stuff, really. Yeah, well, before, I'll, be, I'll be honest, before I met my partner, I was really antisocial. Yes. I'd be, I was, I was um, an introvert. I don't know, it's probably... Ironic now because I'm always chatting and you can't shut me up. But but I just got, went through a really dark period, and sailing saved me. Yeah. Sailing gave me something that no therapist. Yeah. And actually, yeah. I, my therapist said to me, "It was just quickly." Say, yeah. My therapy said, "My therapist, my, my psychiatrist, I should say, God bless him, he's retired now." Uh, he said to me, he goes, Andrew, do you know what you need to do? You need to sail more. And he was spot on because that has just, yeah, that has just been wonders. And I think... Um, it's kind of like one of those things that you, yeah, you often but, hear people sort of saying, oh, if I have to explain it to you, you'd never understand. I think that's... But you, but you can't explain it. I it's, can't sometimes ex- it's hard to explain. Like, yeah, I mean, I'm talking about it now. Yeah. But sometimes it's really hard to explain because everyone has a different uh, take on it, different passion. And some people aren't, they love sailing, not invested in it uh, deeply. Yes. Uh, and some are more, like, let's say Pete. Pete Pete's been, God, Pete's been living on his boat for, I don't know, 14 years, I think. Yeah. 14 years. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I call him the subject matter expert, the go to man, you know, and um, he's someone who's boating through and through. It's in his veins, he's entrenched yes. into the boating lifestyle. Um, you know, so we all had different, different takes, different on. takes on and different sailing reasons and, too. Different reasons for sailing, yeah. as I think I've, I've mentioned before in a couple of previous episodes. You know, my journey, I've been around boats, God, for forty years. Yeah, lived on them before, but this real journey I've been on the last seven or eight years started the day after I was diagnosed with cancer. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. for me, it was like, no, nah, not doing this office thing, not doing the corporate thing. I'm out, and. I've never looked back and I just love it. Yeah. So, and so I think that's, that's, yeah. And I think that's important because like when I, um, you know, when I deployed to Afghanistan and came back, um, I was in complete um, denial, delusional. I don't know. I was uh, drinking. A lot. Yeah. I was just a, you know. Head fucked. Uh, yeah. I was a bag yeah. of shit. Let's just say that. <laughs> Can I say that? Can I swear? Um, yeah, I was well. just a bag of shit. Um, and you don't I just, swear you're not a sailor. Yeah, yeah. And I, I couldn't hold down... Do you know what? I could not hold down a relationship. Yeah. Because I just couldn't even work myself out. Yeah. So how can you give when you can't even work yourself out? Yeah. How can you, so sailing saved me. Let's make sure it's recording. So, yeah, we are recording. Oh, it's now. recording. So just so you know, I've just uh, asked An- Andrew uh, <laughs> you know, for any final comments you'd like to share. We just had a great little chat about yeah. that. Yeah. But Thanks, mate. Being the gun, I was on a roll. I oh, forgot to... Uh, <laughs> So anyway, so we're going to ask Andrew again. Andrew, yeah. any final comments that you'd like to share? <laughs> Take two. Take two. Um, oh, man, look, just just enjoy it. Like, as I said previously before, just go out there and just give it a go and just enjoy it. And don't be, af- don't be afraid. Just um, Be safe, but don't be, be safe. Be safe, yeah. yeah. And, and no one says you have to buy a, a massive big super yacht like yeah. just go like if your budget allows to a uh, buy a trailer sailor buy a trailer sailor if your budget allows to buy a 60 foot Something i don't know other. you know um get someone else to skipper it skipper it yeah. but uh but look no in all seriousness um just get out there and and, and try um and, and, and your journey go. seemed yeah. to be a really practical and sensible one in that you've started small yeah and you've just taken the baby steps. Yes, it's taken yeah. seven years to get where you are now. Yeah. Um, we're hoping that we might better help people get to that position a little bit earlier. Yeah. With, the, with some, some more functional resources for newcomers to boating. That helicopter. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a helicopter. Hopefully you can hear. There. Oh, there's a Red Bums Bay. Yeah. <laughs> Good old right. Red Bums Bay. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah. No worries. All right, guys. Take care. See ya. You've been cold over there, princess.
Yeah. <laughs> you stopping here? Yeah, I think so. Alright. Oh, we'll drop in here somewhere. Yeah. Okay. I think so. It's going to stay out of the west for a few days. I think you'll be fine. So there you go, there's an enlightening, uh, enlightening chat with my friend Andrew, and uh, I hope that's been interesting to you. Um, if you have any questions or queries, get in touch with us, get onto Facebook, drop us an email, drop us a message somewhere, come find us, come ask questions, get involved, and uh, we're gonna do everything we possibly can to help.